In this tutorial, we're going to learn about geomorphometry in GRASS-GIS. Geomorphometry is the quantitative analysis of topography. It includes analyses such as slope, aspect, curvature, and landforms. In this session, we're going to focus on the automatic classification of landforms and the extraction of landform features. We will look at two modules in GRASS-GIS, R.Param Scale, which uses a calculus-based approach, and R.Geomorphon, which uses a machine vision-based approach to automatically classify landforms. Here we see an example. These are landforms on Governor's Island showing red, for example, for ridges, a ridge line going up this land constructed landform, valleys on the pathways below, and yellow for the slopes. You can see other landforms as well, like spurs and foot slopes at the base of the slope. This is computed with geomorphons. And from a map of landforms, we can extract using map algebra individual landform types of landforms, like a rid all the ridge lines. For this tutorial, we're going to use the Governor's Island dataset for GRASS-GIS, so you can go ahead and download that. Download it, extract it, and move it to your GRASS data directory. Let's go ahead and start a new session of GRASS. And we're going to open up the New York State Plain Feet Governor's Island location that we've just downloaded. The permanent map set has our reference data, including an elevation map from 2017 from a LIDAR mission and a time series of imagery. We will create a new map set um, for example, called geomorphometry. I'm going to create one called demo. Uh, let's begin by adding the elevation map. I'm going to add the map elevation 2017 from the permanent map set. Whenever you enter a new map set, you have access to the permanent map set. Around the elevation map, we see a lot of white space. These are null cells. And the red extent of our region is considerably larger than this elevation map. That's because the region set to the imagery. If you look in the permanent map set, you can add one of the imit, uh, one of the ortho photos, uh, for example, imagery 2018. The extent of the imagery um, includes the piers around the island, for example, and some context. The region set to the extent of this imagery, and that means the elevation map has white space around it that has null cells. We can check that with the query, whereas if you click on colored part of the elevation map, you can see the elevation values, 9.3, 14.3. Five, 
up to I think it was like 62.1 survey feet. We want to reduce our region just to the cells with no data, um, the cells with non-null data. We can use g.region. You can type g.region in the console to find that, or you can look in the modules tab under computational region, set region, or under settings, computational region. If we want to set our region to the non-null cells, we will go to bounds tab, and there's a zoom parameter that shrinks the region until it meets non-null data from this map. So we'll set the map to elevation 2017, run this, and it will shrink our region, shown by the red extent, the extent of our computational region, or our region for raster computations, is now set to the bounding box around the null, null, non-null cells in the elevation raster. If we want to make our region even smaller, for example, and capture just the landforms here on the south of Governor's Island, we can zoom in on that area, use the zoom tool, and select our area of interest. Once you have area you want to study, you can go to various zoom options and set the computational region extent from the display. If I click that, now I've set my region just to what's visible on the screen here. I may want to save this now as a named region. So under the various zoom options, save computational region to named region. And I may call this, for example, landforms, the region focused on my landforms. I've already made this, so I will override it. Now, if I zoom out a bit, I'll see the red extent of my region was focused on this area. If I want to, let's say, refine the size of this region, give it um, a nice, neat um, length and width, width and height, I can use g.region and in the print tab, I'll print the current region. This will show me the bounds on the north, the south, the east, and the west. If I want to make a neater boundary, I can, for example, set the northern boundary to 189850, the southern edge, 189100, the east, 978550, the west, 976850. And in effects, I can um, replace the, uh, the saved region. So type in landforms and under optional, allow overwrite. Now if I run this and I zoom, refresh the display or I go here to zoom options, you'll see that I've now set uh, the region based on those boundary extents. So I'll set region, uh, zoom to the safe region, and I'll zoom to the landforms region. So now 
all my raster computations will be run just on this small region with the landforms. There's one more thing I want to do. I want to make sure I turn on a raster mask for the water. So I'll run the command r.mask, which you can also find under modules here under raster. You can also find it in the menu for raster r.mask. So we can set a mask from a raster or a vector, and this will limit all raster operations to what's inside of the mask. So in this case, I'm going to use the shoreline, the vector map of the shoreline as a mask. Run that. Now, if I want to remove this later, I can go to the Remove tab, check this, and that will add the R flag to the command. If I run it, it will remove the mask. We'll do this at the end when we're done. We're ready to run our first landform classification. We're going to use the module r.param scale, which computes topographic parameters with a calculus-based approach. Under modules, under terrain analysis, you'll see terrain parameters, r.param scale. It's also here, raster, terrain analysis, terrain parameters. So in the required tab for r.param scale, we'll set the elevation map, elevation 2017. For the output, we can call this landforms. r.param scale can output multiple different um, terrain parameters, and we choose the one we want in the optional tab. You'll see morphometric parameter to calculate under method. We're going to set the method, in this case to feature. We have options of elevation, slope, aspect, different types of curvature, and feature. Feature is basic types of landforms, ridge, valley, um, peak and pit, and so forth saddle, and so forth. Six basic types. We'll also need to set the size of the processing window. So this uses a moving window approach. A window of a set size moves across our computational region sampling cells. The size needs to be odd because there's the cell in the center and then the two cells for the smallest window possible, a window of size three, there's the cell in the middle and the surrounding cells, making it three by three cells. So we can go from three, five, seven, nine. Let's start with nine. We're going to check allow overwrite. This produces a fairly fine grain where we're seeing the micro topography of the landscape. Here, this yellow line, let's add the legend. This yellow line is the ridge. I'm going to add a raster legend for landforms. I'm going to quickly set the font settings in the fonts tab. And apply. We'll right click on this to resize the legend. So we can see with the yellow we have ridges, with the blue we have channels, so for example, the, um, the pathways are being computed as channels. 
we toggle between the, our landform map and our ortho photo from 2018, we can see, for example, that this pathway winding up the slopes has been uh, classified as a channel and that this primary ridge going up this landform has been classified correctly as a ridge. However, on the side slopes, we're seeing a lot of micro topography. For example, here, we're seeing the side of the slope based on its curvature being classified as either ridge or valley, ridge or channel. This isn't, in this case, particularly helpful. Um, So we're going to instead compute um, landforms with r.geomorphon, which has more, more classes of landforms. So we've used r.param scale. Before we go, let's look at the size of the processing window. If we increase the size of the processing window, we're going to get a more generalized result. We're going to stop seeing micro topography and we're going to see the, the larger landforms. So if we, for example, set processing size to 33 and run the module again, making sure you checked over right, then you'll see much more general landforms. Here we see valleys on the main pathways around the landforms. And the, uh, of course, the, the ridge line still classified as ridge, but a lot of the micro topography has, uh, has been showing up. Now, let's classify the geomor uh, landforms using the geomorphons method. Geomorphons uses a machine vision approach and it classifies um, cells as a type of landform based on their visibility from eight cardinal directions. So their visibility, their degree of openness um, is a metric for uh, um, the openness and curvature of the terrain. It classifies, I think, 10 different basic types, um, including flat, peak, ridge, shoulder, spur, slope, hollow, foot slope, valley, and pits. We can run this with the command r.geomorphon. You can find it here under raster, terrain analysis, geomorphon. Landforms r.geomorphon. Open up a module. We're going to again set our input elevation raster to elevation 2017 with a permanent map set. The following parameters are very important as they set the scale of the analysis. There's the outer search radius. I'm going to set this quite large to 36. The inner search radius, I'm going to set this to 6. And the flatness threshold, I'll set to 12. The search radius defines the scale of the landforms. The inner surge radius, the skip parameter, um, eliminates very small landforms, microtopography, and the flatness threshold determines what is considered flat ground. So this is going to be anything below 12 degrees we consider as uh, a flat plane. because. From the LiDAR survey, there's, there's quite a bit of noise. We're capturing the grass um, and small shrubs. So there's quite a bit 
of um, what would show up as microtopography as small landforms from the, uh, on the ground. Um, we need to go to the second tab, patterns, and set an output. In the forms, the most common geomorphic forms, we're going to make an output map called geomorphons. If we hadn't already made a map called landforms, that would be a, a good name here. Then finally, under the optional tab, we're going to set overwrite because we're going to run this a couple times. Now you're ready to run the module, and it's going to compute our geomorphons. The first thing we'll do after it finishes is update the legend. I'm going to double click on the legend here and under input I'm going to change the map to geomorphons. So I can see my 10 types of landforms here. I can see that some of the features have been really clearly captured. I've got my ridge line here got a peak at the top of the ridge. This ridge line has been identified. The peak of the ridge has been clearly classified. Coming off of the peak, it's classifying spurs radiating out from the peak. And a big difference with our dot param scale is that we've classified a lot of the side of the landforms as a slope. This is really important. We're not just classifying everything as ridges or valleys, but um, slopes and intermediate landforms. The main pathway here has been classified as a valley, and the edges of the landforms over here have been classified as foot slopes. We can see clear, clear landforms, clear patterns of landforms defining these quite neat um, designed landforms. With the high flatness threshold, we're getting these large lawns to accurately show up. These large lawns in the, uh, the north and the east and the south clearly showing up as, um, as flat areas. If we want to change the scale of this analysis, We can go back to the r.geomorphon command, and under the required tab, we can change the search parameters, for example. So if I change the outer radius, say, to 18, and run this again, making sure I've turned on the overwrite option, we'll see smaller scale land. smaller scale landforms, but especially a smaller skip parameter and also a smaller threshold parameter are going to increase the noise in the landscape. So the higher these are, the more, the more general landforms we're going to detect. If you're interested in capturing microtopography, then you need to reduce the scale of some of these parameters at the risk of increasing So run r.geomorphon until you're starting to see landforms at the scale that you want to have them classified. 
which we want to have them classified. This is the same as adjusting the window, the moving window size in R dot param scale. Our next step is to visualize um, our landforms a little bit better. We're going to add shaded relief to our landform. So let's run the command r.relief. You can look under module or in the raster menu. Terrain analysis, raster, terrain analysis, and compute shaded relief with r.relief. Our input raster is going to be elevation 2017. And our output we can call relief. Optionally, under the Sun Position tab, you can change the altitude and azimuth. Changing the azimuth can be very useful for um, changing sun direction at different times of day. Um, changing the angle at which the, um, the relief is visualized. Under the Optional tab, we should change the elevation units to survey, survey feet. And we may optionally want to adjust the z-scale. First of all, let's run it with survey feet and see how much relief we're getting. Since these are pretty large landforms, we're getting decent relief, but I'm going to increase the vertical exaggeration here with z-scale to a factor of two, make sure I have overwrite checked, run it again. Now my landforms are really popping out. So I'll close this. But we set the units to US survey feet because by default, R.relief will run in meters. Now we want to overlay the shaded relief with a landform map. So we're going to use the command r.shade, apply shade to raster. And it's here under raster, terrain analysis, r.shade. Our shaded relief map is going to be the relief map that we just computed. And we're going to drape the geomorphons map on top of that. We'll name this the output shaded geomorphons. We may want to run this again and increase the bright, brighten parameter. So I'm going to hit run. We'll see the result. And it's a little dark. Um, so I'm going to increase the brightness. In the optional tab, first of all, I'm going to allow overwrite. Then I'm going to increase the brightness to say 45, and run at this again. Now, um, I've got a nice, nice balance of brightness and shading. And I can start to three, see the three-dimensional shape of the landforms. Zoom to the whole layer and see what it looks like. So right-click on shaded geomorphons, zoom to selected map. We can see the extent of the whole map. Comparing it with just the geomorphon layer, we can really start to see the shape of the landforms more clearly. And see that we really did identify the ridge line here, for example. Our next step is to extract the ridge line from this map. So we can extract any of the landforms based on their category number with map algebra. So we're going to open the raster map calculator 
we can type in r.mapcalc. As you start to type it, it will autocomplete. Or you can look under modules, raster, raster map calculator, and find r.mapcalc. Again, that's raster, raster map calculator, r.mapcalc. So we're going to create a new map, and we could extract any of these landforms, but I'm going to extract the ridges. So I'll name the new map ridges, and we're going to write an if-then-else statement. Um, to see what functions are available, you can look here under functions and pick the ifxab function. Or we can just write it if so our if part of the statement is going to be geomorphons equals three for ridges. So if the map raster map geomorphons equals equals three the value of three which is the value for ridges, then we're going to write a value of 1. Otherwise, we're going to write a value of null. So there's going to be either no value, if there's no landform, or if there is a value of 1. Null is a function, and it ha has a set of parentheses on it. We can find it here on the insert function list. And then we close the if statement with another parenthesis. So if geomorphons equals three, comma, then write one, comma, else write null values. We're ready to run this. And if we turn on just the layer land for ridges, we'll see the ridges in our landscape. If we want to adjust the color for this, we can. Um, I can right click here on the ridges layer and go set color table interactively. And it's going to show me the colors assigned to the values. I have no value is white, and one is set to yellow. I'll just change that, for example, to red so that it matches the geomorphon legend. Now it matches my legend. And I may also want to assign a category to this. So I can do that with the command r.category, raster, category, change category values and labels, manage category information, r.category. The name of the map is ridges. And I'm going to go to the define tab and first of all, let's go to the optional tab. I'm going to make a field separator. I'm going to set this to, you can choose any of them. I'm going to set it to pipe. And define, I'm going to enter the values directly. Right here, I'm going to type in one. In my separator, a pipe, I'm going to type in um, ridges. Or ridge. So that's saying, if the map has a value of one, then it has the category value, category label. If the category value is one, then the category label is rich. Run that. Now we can, for example, set a new legend. So if I remove the legend, I'm going to add a new raster legend. 
four ridges. I'll just check my font settings quickly. Apply. And I need to resize this. Right click, resize. And I have my ridge label here now. Our final step is to extract vector ridges. So let's vectorize the ridges so that we have a nice, neat vector format. We're going to clean up the ridges and reduce a lot of the small, um, the small pieces. Let's do this by converting first of all, from raster to vector. The command is r2vect, and we can find that in the raster tab, map type conversions, raster to vector, r2vect. That will also be here under modules, raster, map type conversion, raster to vector. Our input raster map is, of course, going to be ridges. Output vector map, we can also call ridges. Our output feature type will be areas. That's all we need. So run the module, and we see our ridges appear here. hide the raster layer now. You can see there's a lot of very small pieces. So we're going to do several steps to clean this up. The first of all is the command v.clean. I'm going to go to vector, or we can do this in modules. I'm going to collapse the computational region in the raster tabs. I'm going to go to vector, topology maintenance, and there's the command v.clean, clean vector map. My input vector map is going to be ridges, and my output vector map will be um, also ridges. I'm going to replace it, and I'm going to allow overwrite. I'm going to add some cleaning tools right here. I'm going to remove small areas with a remove small area tool. I'm going to set the threshold for this to 2. Check it and run. I'll set the output here to uh, ridges cleaned and run this. So if we toggle between ridges and ridges cleaned, you can see that a lot of the small pieces have been removed. You can change the threshold value to change at which size the small areas are removed. Now some of these still have a very convoluted border. And the border is pixelated because it's from a raster at the raster resolution. Right? So if we want to smooth our border so that it looks nice when we zoom very far in, um, we're also going to need to smooth it. So we'll do that with the command v.generalize. Here under vector topology maintenance, there is the command v.generalize to smooth or simplify. Our input vector map is going to be ridges cleaned, and our output will be ridges generalized.
our generalization algorithm. We're going to start with um, C, the Ruman method. We're going to set our threshold for this to 2. This is going to, first of all, simplify our boundaries. So v.generalize can either, there's algorithms for simplification and algorithms for smoothing. We're going to first um, simplify it with the Ruman method. And then we're going to smooth it um, with either the snakes or the hermite method. So let's run this. You can see that the border has been, um, and the shape has been uh, dramatically simplified. We've reduced the number of points on the border quite substantially. And we're also changing the shape a bit. Now let's smooth this. So in v.generalize, we're going to make the input as ridges generalized. We're going to make the output just ridges. We're going to change the generalization algorithm to either Hermite or Snakes. I'm going to start with Snakes. And I'm going to set my threshold to 2. And I need to, in this case, set an alpha and beta, beta parameter under optional. These are parameters just for Snakes. I'm going to set them to 1. I'm going to run the command. I need to set overwrite. I get an error message because I hadn't set it. I'm overwriting the original ridges map. Allow overwrite, yes. And if I turn on my ridges map, you'll see my nice smooth boundaries. So now my vector map of ridges has been nicely simplified and smoothed. If I want to change the uh, colors to make this look more like a figure ground of landforms, I can do that. Double click to bring up the vector display menu. Go to Colors, set the fill color to uh, solid black. Optionally, we could um, turn the set the boundary to transparent one. But we don't need to. We, now we have a nice vector map of the landforms. The advantage of this over the raster is that when we zoom in, we can zoom in far as we want. We'll keep a crisp line, whereas the raster will be very pixelated. All right, that concludes this tutorial on geomorphometry in GrassGIS. Thank you.